Hello, um, welcome to the beginning of chapter three. Um, we're going to start talking about um, another of the um, one of the two main um, high, the vir uh, virtualization products we're, we're going to be studying this semester. Um, as a review, our, our three big products are uh, VirtualBox, which, which we did last chapter, uh, VMware, which we're going to spend several chapters on, and Hyper-V, which we're also going to spend a few chapters on. Um, so we're still working at the desktop. We'll get to uh, vCenter and um, ESXi and all of that later. Right now, we're going to talk about Workstation 12 Pro. Now, do not worry if um, you're already working with Workstation 15. Um, you should already have um, installed that on your own machine. Um, you could acquire, you, you could uh, get it from on the hub or using the VMware um, light, the out account you should have established as one of your uh, chapter one act your chapter two uh, your chapter one chapter two activities um now and if so if you're like i said if you're already working with 15 don't worry what i encourage you to do as you're working with the text working with the um mind tap labs working with and doing compare that with the experiences you may already have had um with workstation 15 or the things you're doing on your own um over the course of this semester with work with workstation 15. notice the user experience differences um that's actually something we're going to also you kind of have to get used to uh, over the course of your career the, the software you use will change um you may uh the 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 customer or the client may um or so you your uh, your employer um may upgrade to something you don't like as much your client may be stuck in the past you just have to deal with those differences um notice what you like notice what you don't notice what changes what make what's better um okay, that almost goes into um software engineering user experience um that sort of thing um it's the little things sometimes that matter. So what we're going to talk about um, this in this chapter, uh, we're going to um, install Workstation Pro. You may already have done that, and if so, great. Um, you're going to talk about dealing with virtual machines in the administrative console. The administrative console is just a $5 word for the interface. Um, we're going to talk about importing them, exporting them, cloning them, using the various all the various menu options. You don't have to master all these things, but the more familiar you are with them, the easier it will be for you to figure out how to do something you don't immediately know how to do. Um, the interface is pretty good, relatively intuitive, um, but you, you can still, you, you can more or less figure out what you need to do by just investing in it a little without really committing. Um, we're going to talk about common ta performing some common tasks, how to share these virtual machines with other hosts, and even using a VMware Workstation Player. I mean, every time you install Workstation Pro, you get Workstation Player. Workstation Player is really kind of intended as a, as a user-only space. Say, for example, if you don't need to build VMs, you don't need to change their settings, but you just need to run it. Um, say, for example, you, you build a VM for a specific purpose for a, a user. Say, for example, you've got... Uh, uh, help desk analysts to support and you want them to be able to play with the options in various different operating systems without having 10 computers um, arrayed around them on the desk. If you don't want them to be able to, to tinker with those uh, those virtual machines, you can build them and, and deploy them as OVA, OVFs, o o Open Virtualization Appliances, um, open them in VMware Player, and they basically got a read-only guest operating system that they can use to, to follow the user through the process or demonstrate the process to the user if they're in sort of a, uh, a teleconference set, uh, support format, which is becoming more common. Um, now that um, you can use... Um, remote desktop solutions and teleconferencing almost at the same time, and you can almost turn them into each other. Um, 
it's come it's becoming more and more common for for help desk analysts to actually be able to take control of the end user's computer watch what the end user is doing or or start a little training session and show the user this is how it should work um, because user training is really a, is 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 an important part of how we do what we do um, the more your users know how to do for themselves the less time they spend on the phone with you so in the next video we're going to introduce uh, the installation process um, and we're going to go on from there um, we're going to have a, I think there's going to be about 13 videos in this series um, I'm going to keep most of them pretty short there are a few of them that are going to be a little bit longer um, so let's get started